So this is the design process for um, one of the beginner scripts, which is The Reaper Calls at Midnight, and it's set in a cemetery. So I started with um, just some paper that I had cut for a, a scale model, kind of, and plywood sheets come in a four by eight. So I started with that for the middle one, and then another one I just cut in half, and so that I could have my scale, which is one inch on paper to one foot on the actual uh, porticoi, or it's perioctoi, sorry. <laughs> and um, then I just started sketching things in that kind of made sense. I did the um, gravestones in the front bigger so that they appear closer to us, and then just kind of a row of crooked ones in the background. We want them to look like they've been there a long time and <clears throat> have aged quite a bit. And then we projected that up here, and that first day, or second day of class, we did all the pencil tracing of this design as we projected it. So to get our images on the background flat on the porticoi, which is what this is called, it's a Greek word for easy scene changes, we're going to use the projector to trace the images. And this is the design that I sketched on paper that I cut to scale. And generally, plywood sheets are sh sold in a 4 by 8 foot sheet. So my scale is 1 inch on paper to 1 foot on the plywood. So that I cut the first sheet was 4 inches by 8 inches. And then the other one is just a four by eight cut in half so that we can have the doors that will open like that and the other design is on the inside. And using a projector to do an image like this is really useful for people who aren't confident in their sketching skills or maybe just don't want to do it or can't come up with a, an idea and they'd rather project um, something that they copy on the transparency and then we can get it we draw it to scale and we get it perfectly on here and then we just take a regular pencil and they get dull really quickly because the surface is rough but there's no need to erase because we're going to paint over everything and I like to use the pencil um, kind of sideways, otherwise it gets dull quicker and you, you can use it a lot longer if you use the side of it. So you can just go quickly and trace the image as it's drawn on the transparency. And then we can, and then we can just choose our paint colors and just start filling this in just like you would in a color book. And that would be the first, sort of the first layer and this one we already started <coughs> filling in the paint. I'm going to turn off the projector so we can... Oh, another thing. <laughs> I'll do this first. When you are sketching, if you, if you turn off the projector, you can see where you might have missed some of the sketching. So like when I turned it off, I could see that I hadn't done these lines or any of the bottom really, but say I missed one here, I would know that I had missed it. So as your sketch, as we get to the end of the sketching part or the tracing part, then we can turn off the projector and see anything we've missed. And this is a rooftop. These are tiles on the rooftop overlooking a city. And the superheroes are going to show up and they all have different skills and superpowers and they're going to audition to see who gets to save the city. As I was thinking about the design, I was imagining which buildings I would want to look like they had different light shining on them. And so that's kind of, that's what we're doing today. We're, we're thinking more about that and how color will help to tell the story. So you'll have actors out here who do the verbalizing story, but scenic design helps to tell the story by creating mood and the setting, the time period, 
And so with the city, we're kind of doing a little bit of fantasy because we're doing some of this, like that looks like an olive and that looks a little, resembles an ice cream cone because superheroes are generally fantasy, although they may exist, I don't know. So as we choose colors for the buildings, it's nighttime. So we'll choose the colors. They'll all be kind of the same color family, like blues and purples, and maybe some green. But we'll keep it, we'll keep them all in the same cooler color family because night, we want to tell the story of nighttime. And we'll kind of do lighter up in the top because we want it to look like the moon is shining. And so then when we paint the buildings, we want some to look closer and some to look further away. So I was just, these just didn't get erased when we did the projector, but this is an L for light and dark. And I think there's an M for medium tone. So that's just kind of, we'll decide which ones we want to emphasize. And these are, these will be white or maybe a, like a, a tan, yeah. but they'll be brighter because we want it to look like some lights are on the building. Yeah, so like yellow. Yeah. That'll create um, more visual interest. Otherwise, we're just going to have blocks of square shaped color on there, and it's not as exciting for us to look at. Take the length you need, and then hold it on the top, and then you can move it around before you stick it down. Straighten it up. <laughs> we don't want all the buildings in one area to be the same color. So this will be dark purple. And then we're going to sort of transition into where we'll have almost a white space up there. Probably a little bit of yellow in it for the moon. Hold it down with one hand on one side. did the same process of this uh, when we projected it, we traced it. And then because there's so many straight lines, we thought it would be faster to tape it off. So some of these are not fully blocked in yet. And today we'll start adding, again, um, we'll start putting in the sky to bring that to life. And we'll add some texture and then some accents, windows and stuff like that. a little bit off even and then draw softly draw the line but you don't want to leave it Let's alone with that. pull it out so it looks like shadow so you just so you just gently brush the paint away like that okay what are you doing so we have this leaf comes up here, so I'm going to take the red, just a little bit of paint. And it's good to get red paint down here because this is going to be, where the stem comes, that's going to be all shadow. So we can do that as well. And then just pull it down like this. Kind of go to the, yeah, to the center because we want it to look like, like the one above is shadowing it. And then you can also, I like to mix it kind of a little pink so it's not just stark white. Hey. But you can do yeah, where the sun might catch the leaves like that. And it's fine to cover a lot of this bright pink, but whatever kind of feels And we don't need it quite that bright. It's just kind of blend them. And I think I'll give you some pink so you can blend it more as you go, but we want those shadows, that'll define all the leaves, and then a little bit of highlight where the light catches it. Got it. I think you Because we want it to look um, rainy and foggy. Like Why is a, there a lizard just a jungle? standing there? <laughs> you do be chilling. Don't talk, the first rule of scenic painting is you don't talk about gecko. <laughs> Why? 
why not get them? That's great. Do you know what the second rule of scenic painting is? No. Don't talk at all. Don't talk about gecko. Why not talk about gecko? You know what the third rule about scenic painting is? What? Don't talk about gecko. Don't talk. Period. Okay, so the scumble technique, you have very little paint on your brush. This has a lot because I was doing that, but you try to have a fairly dry brush. And so you'll like, and then you do a really quick and light motion like this, and then you make an X. And you just keep overlapping until you get as much paint on there as you want. See how instead of looking streaky, it's starting to look more um, foggy or it's kind of like a smoother look and foggier look. Yes. If you take your brush, dip one quarter of, into the red, one into the white, and go back and forth like this, you'll get a nice load on your brush, and then come through and go up like so and end right like that. Go on the belly side and come like so. Then you can come with your brush pretty much looking up to the ceiling and go like this. And now I'm going to just load again that same thing. And then we're going to go right behind here and get a petal. And here's another petal. And then a little squat. Then we're going to go into the green and you press down wiggle 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 and come out and there's a leaf press down wiggle 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 and then come up and that goes like that rose leaves are beautiful like that and then you can make yourself a stem and that's how you do the rose if you wish to make a just a little bud just do that, and that's your bud. And then you can come in and put your little, little leaves there. Um, draw attention to something or draw focus. So say I wanted <laughs> well, that will draw people's eyes. We have to just camouflage them a little bit. But, um, well, because it's a spot there. But, beautiful. like, on the city scene, how we have those, those lines on the ground, we want those lines to direct people to look to the city stage. So we can use lines to direct the audience to look at something. And sometimes you'll do that with how actors line up on the stage. Like, so what do you see? Yeah, that's directing the viewer's eye to look down low and high and sometimes we'll do like a motion like this as actors, but we also do that with like lines in our scenic painting. Yeah. Oh, so like this.